Hit Zero Discrimination Day. It's a UN day, and uh, I just picked a, a few things I probably can share with you uh, from the website of my guests. Discrimination strikes at the very heart of human being. It is treating someone differently simply because of who they are or what they believe. Yet all too often we hear heartbreaking stories uh, of people who suffer cruelty simply for belonging to a different group from those in power and what do we do about it uh, for this conversation zero discrimination the un has taxed us to make noise for zero discrimination and we played a song from a hip-hop artist who is making noise for zero discrimination time now for us uh, to talk and make some more noise. My guest is Acting Director, uh, Amnesty International Ghana, Mr. Frank Doi. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mamani. Yeah. You're welcome to our show. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Definitely. Uh, so let's start off this way. You know when we talk about discrimination in Ghana, in the Ghanaian context, yeah. it's usually discrimination against women. Uh, are we overdoing it, or this is rightly so, because women are generally discriminated against? Uh, well, thank you very much um, once again. Amnesty International, as you already know, is a global movement of people working for the promotion and protection of human rights worldwide. Our vision, before I come to your question directly, mm -hmm. our vision is to ensure that all persons enjoy all the human rights that are enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other internationally recognized human rights uh, standards. The issue um, about discrimination uh, and the way you put it, one can easily say that when we talk about discrimination, particularly within our context, mm. even though we know that not, it's not only women who are discriminated against, on a balance, on a scale of one to 10, we can say uh, seven or eight, you know, affect women. Okay. Okay. So we are not uh, overemphasizing uh, the aspect of discrimination against women. We know in some instances men are also discriminated against, mm. but women are the most affected when it comes to discrimination. Okay. Uh, particularly with respect to uh, the enjoyment of fundamental human rights and freedoms. Mm. Mm. One of the questions that I'm asking today is: Do you feel discriminated against? In what ways? Uh, and Maxwell Agbaba is going around somewhere in the capital and he's got a board with him. So we, we're, having, we're trying to get people to write uh, how they feel discriminated against as Ghanaians living in Ghana. And later on, we'll also be joined by Mr. Austin Gamer, uh, who is a, a labor specialist. He'll join us via Skype on this conversation as well when we talk about uh, discrimination at the workplace, labor discrimination. Okay, so uh, you, now the understanding is, yes, rightly so. We talk about women being discriminated against because yeah. if, you pull a, if you put a scale down, it's women yeah. who are mostly discriminated against. Yeah. Uh, some, somebody may be wondering right now, what do the, women, the men uh, report they've been discriminated against? What are the things that you know, they're discriminated against? Well, uh, you know, when it comes to men being discriminated against and how they report it, uh, because of the cultural context within which, you know, issues of discrimination are reported, men usually would not want to come out openly, mm. you know, to see that they have been discriminated against, particularly within the, the framework of human rights when it comes to men and women. Uh, for example, we know that in a home, you know, there are instances where men uh, are seen to be at a receiving end in terms of... Uh, you know, violence, you know, but they are not able to or willing, mm. you know, to come out openly because of uh, the fear of, you know, a stigmatization, all right? So, um, but then human rights are for all, you know, and we have institutions uh, that have a responsibility to ensure that the rights of all are protected and promoted and, in fact, fulfilled at all times. So, any man who feels discriminated, in one situation or another, or in any uh, circumstance, should feel free and be bold enough to come out, whether discriminated in the home, at the workplace, you know, within religious circles, or even in government circles. Once you feel that you have been treated unfairly, mm. you know, you are free to come out. And once you come out, you have people, you know, and individuals and groups, you know, uh, standing up in solidarity with you to ensure that 
you know, that element of discrimination against you is taken away. Mm -hmm. So men should not feel shy at all, uh, you know, to, to report acts of discrimination against them, whatever it may occur. So when, when, you, when you talk about it, when you report, then what mm -hmm. happens? It's not as if everything would change. If I feel that, uh, uh, and you know, there are things that generally people, some, some, somebody may think it's petty because you're talking about it. I mean, if, for instance, you feel like, okay, because you're a woman, mm -hmm. people think of you in a certain way. Whether yeah. you like it or not, and those are their thoughts. Yeah. And even if you were to report, they mm -hmm. would still think the same. Yeah. It's, it's because of, uh, you know, social construction. You know, the way society perceives men and women and the tags and labels that we place on men and women. That is what makes it easy for people to be discriminated against. But as I said, uh, human rights are for all to enjoy. Mm. They are entitlements, the basic standards of life that people must have and enjoy, irrespective of their gender, you know, or sex. W if, would if like. we, would so we... that there are institutions, as I mentioned, mm. that are institutions that have the responsibility to ensure that no one is discriminated against. Mm. Uh, well, would we all, would we all really be treated mm. equally? Uh, that, 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 reality, that is the would ideal, we all be treated that, equally? That is the ideal thing that we should all aspire to, that we should all be treated equally. We, we know that um, we, we have people who, because of their special rules or peculiar positions that they hold in society, mm. have some privileges, you know, given to them. So it, it is not... Um, possible to have 100 percent you know equality in, in, in our societies but then no one should be denied you know the enjoyment of his or her fundamental human rights because of who he is or she is because of where she lives or where she works you know our constitution the 1992 constitution of ghana mm -hmm. is clear on on, on the issue of non-discrimination um article 15 talks about you know, the, the importance of human dignity, that the dignity of all persons shall be invaluable. It, it talks about the fact that no one should be subjected, for example, to torture, uh, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, which tr tr treatments are likely, you know, to, to affect the person's dignity. Mm. So, yes, we may not have 100% equality in our society, but we must make conscious effort to progressively work towards having an environment that is fair to all, a situation where every individual, man, woman, boy, girl, black, white, whatever your, your um, orientation even might be, that you are not denied your basic fundamental human rights and freedom. Mm -hmm. Once we have that you know, as our, object, our objective and we work at it, then we are sure that um, we will be heading towards creating a peaceful environment, you know, where we can all live in peace and also contribute meaningfully to national development. Mm. As you were talking, I was just trying to picture the prisons, for instance, because yeah. we've told their stories many times, and yeah. we know how uh, the environment in some instances is even yeah. inhumane. Yeah. Uh, look at the way somebody is arrested, for instance. Yeah. Uh, in, in our context, mm -hmm. hardly... Yeah. Are you read your rights? Yeah. You're just yeah. invited yeah. and you're questioned. Yeah. Uh, and, but the point is that we know of the things that happen. Yeah. We know of these things. But what have we even done about them? You say, thank you very much, Mama. This is a very important issue that you have raised. Amnesty International is concerned about all forms of human rights violation. Uh, sometimes we are misrepresented and misunderstood. But our work is placed within you know, internationally recognized human rights standards, which our states have ratified. And once a state ratifies an international human rights law, uh, there are some obligations. For example, that you should make efforts to integrate that law in your domestic law, if you like domestication. Mm. There should be policies, you know, in place to drive delivery and implementation of the, of the law. And then also institutions should be set up or established to oversee the implementation of the provisions of the law which we have so freely ratified. In Ghana, we have done so well in terms of um, ratification of international human rights standards. I mean, we are almost the first, you know, when the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child came up, we're almost the first or so 
to, we to can, ratify. We, we have ratified on, different things. Good. We have ratified the CEDAW and, and so on and so forth. We have ratified the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, for example, which talks about you know, the protection of the right to life and the respect for human dignity. Now, the prison conditions that you, you, you raised is something that Amnesty International has raised a number of times. You know, last year, Ghana appeared before the UN Human Rights Committee. And one of the, the concerns raised has to do with, with the conditions you know, in, in, in the prisons. And the recommendation to Ghana to make efforts to make sure that we improve our prison conditions, talk about the issue of health, for example, the overcrowding, the congestion in, mm. in, the, in our prisons. I mean, uh, anybody at all, at any time, can find himself or herself in prison. Mm -hmm. So we are all at risk. Uh, the prison is not a sole prison of a particular group of people. Right, so our policy makers must be interested, you know, in ensuring that pre inmates, you know, at our prisons and other, you know, areas of detention or place of detention are given the opportunity, you know, to enjoy their basic fundamental human rights. For example, in 2011, Amnesty International, you know, and the African research into our prisons, the various prisons in Ghana, uh, again, I must um, express appreciation to the Minister of Interior, the Ghana Prison Service, for cooperating and collaborating with us on that. So we came up with a report, you know, titled "The Prisoners at the Bottom of the Pile." We raised issues about the overcrowding, and we raised issues about the health condition. I mean, the the meals, the food that they eat, and all mm. that. And we made some recommendations, and I'm happy to say that one of the recommendations that we made um, had to do with the. Uh, increase in the, the feeding grants or the amount of money given um, to the prison service to feed uh, inmates. And so it's raised to one city, 80 pesos. This was back still, in 2011. Yeah. Still the same. Still the this same. It's woefully inadequate. But it also shows that um, uh, to some extent we have good intentions. But good intentions are not enough. I mean, there are policies and, and mechanisms in place, for example, to make sure that our prisons are decongested. Mm. Uh, Amnesty International has been advocating for non-custodial services or sentences, for example. That is not every crime. Minor crimes, you know, should not take people to the prisons. I mean, we can, you know, ask people to do community services. A crime is, you know, engulfed in filth. We can ask people to clean our, our cities, people to engage in productive activities like agriculture, for example, to contribute to the economic development of the country. Mm. We know of the, the Justice for All program, which yeah. is a very, very good program underway. We believe it's also one of the measures being put in place to ensure that we speed up the process of justice delivery to make sure that um, you know, people are not kept too long in, in prison. We've talked about people being on remand for far too long because mm. of the delays in the justice you know, system. Yeah. So yes, Ghana must comply you know, with international human rights laws that we have mm. ratified and to ensure that the rights of prisoners are respected. My worry is that we keep talking about these things uh, and even when we have the policies, they are mm. not implemented. Mm. Uh, but let me just bring Mr. Austin Game into the conversation because mm -hmm. he's just joined us. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Game. Uh, really appreciate your time with us this morning. And, and Happy New Year to you. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. Uh, I, I can't believe we, we haven't spoken this year. So, yes, <laughs> Happy New Year. Shalom, brother Austin. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Mr. Austin Gamma is going to speak on the, the, the labor aspect of this, and he's joining us uh, via Skype. Uh, Mr. Gamma, we're, we're talking about zero discrimination, because uh, today is a day that the UN has set aside for us to make some noise on zero discrimination. I want to bring you to the workplace. Uh, and first of all, even before we go to the bigger picture, there are a lot of men who... They just see you as a woman and they think that you are dumb, you know, like you are empty. Uh, if I feel discriminated against in that way, what can I do? Well, thank you. Uh, in the first place, it should not have been so. But you cannot say we will have uh, this thing completely washed out. Uh, because men by nature and uh, by upbringing, uh, it appears that you, the women yourself from the West Group, you try to discriminate in favor of we, the young men, even as we come of age. Everything in the house seems to be the work of the girl or the woman, and we, the men, have some little bit of freedom to do what we want to do. 
I've watched my father and my mother coming from farm, and for us, my small brothers were at the back of my mother, carrying some firewood on top of her head. My father was just uh, walking majestically. <laughs> when we got home, my mother had struggled to cook for him and fetch water and leave it at the bathroom for him to bath. All those things see the same. We copied it from my, my field of time. Thank God, for some reason, most of us have abandoned that kind of uh, task management between men and women. But because we exist as a community of nations, it still prevails, both in, in, in so-called advanced countries and and, and around here also. So there should be a way, and it should come through two ways. One, through education, and also through the church. Uh, if you go to church and they are preaching, things about the women should be placed where they should, should be placed. Things about men should be placed where they should be placed, and, and so forth and so on. That may reduce the kind of uh, impartiality that we have in the system. Mm. Uh, there's still uh, a lot of sex for jobs as well. I wonder how many of these cases are reported. And when we talk about sex for jobs, is it just the women or the men are also coming forth with such concerns? Both, both, both sides, but let's be honest. Uh, it's more uh, against the women uh, than, the, than the men. The truth is that it's very easy for men uh, who are not well trained and who do not have their head properly screwed on to easily ask for favor, uh, sometimes even demand it uh, to have uh, pleasure with uh, women before they employ them. They don't even care about how it feels like to do that. So it's a very common phenomenon. Uh, the way out again is about proper education. I, hopefully the people who are educating may not be themselves guilty because We've been reading in the news uh, how that a number of, uh, unfortunately, teachers who impregnated a number of girls, mm -hmm. and these are the people who are supposed to be teaching, and this is their character. So I'm really scared about, uh, in the next few years to come, how our nation will look like, mm. uh, because the people who are supposed to be teaching themselves are extraordinarily guilty about this kind of uh, activity. Mm -hmm. So we have a genuine serious problem. To fill the void, honestly, the churches, I think, that have a big, big role to play. Because the political office holder, the teacher, is not maybe having that kind of uh, capacity uh, to do that. They can only talk about it rightly or wrongly, but the church leadership. And so if we can, you know, as prove to people that the church leadership is really up to the task and speak not just speak in public, but educate the people in public and they themselves exhibiting such character, people would emulate them and mm. it will reduce the kind of uh, uh, cheating we have on the women in particular in the society. Mm. Mr. Ngame, let me just bring uh, Mr. Doi in, in, in this bit of the conversation. Yeah. Education, is that all we can do? I mean, where else, what, where else can we report? Is there some kind of legal action that can be taken if I feel discriminated against in the workplace, for instance? Well, thank you. I think education is the way to go. I mean, to, to begin with, uh, education informs people. Uh, so education also empowers people. Um, education gives people opportunity to know what is right and what is wrong. And so, yes, education is very important and comprehensive, you know, national education you know, on what we need to do to prevent discrimination at all places. But apart from the educational aspect, we also need to enforce our laws. As I said at the beginning, we have a lot of laws and policies. You know, we have the, the Domestic Violence Act, for example, our own constitution, you know, which is the basic law of the land. But the problem is the lack of political will to effectively, you know, implement the laws that we have. So if we combine the implementation of the laws with a comprehensive public education, we will be making, I mean, uh, uh, making a lot of um, good efforts, you know, towards addressing the issue of discrimination. Mm. So yes, education is paramount, okay. but then we must also enforce our laws to okay. make sure that those who have responsibility to do the right thing 
do so effectively mm -hmm. and efficiently. We also need to, you know, uh, provide the needed resources for state institutions, you know, that are mandated to address some of these issues. Talk about the police. Sometimes we blame them, you know, but we need to cooperate with the police because they can't do it alone. So whatever resources that um, our security agencies or um, state institutions need, you know, to be able to do their work and to do so effectively must be provided for them. And okay. then the cooperation from, you know, the general public. Um, human rights go hand in hand with responsibilities. So for us, we emphasize the point that rights and responsibilities are reciprocal. So mm -hmm. that when we talk about non-discrimination, it also means that we must all contribute, you know, to ensuring that people are not discriminated. We must report the issues, and when they are reported, people who have the, the, um, the responsibility to take action must also do so mm. without fear or okay. favor. And once you mentioned the police, Shrash mm. came to mind, mm. and the fact that they are hugely under-resourced. And I mm. want to ask you, uh, Mr. Gamay, you know the Labor Commission in and out, uh, and I'm sure that they also have their own resource challenges, but are they able to resolve some of these workplace uh, discrimination issues that come or go before them? Yes, uh, they, they try to do. Uh, uh, the difficulty and the uh, appreciation of this thing has been put in front of One, uh, when it comes to discrimination at the workplace and or harassment or bullying of a kind at the workplace, it's, it's very strong in the Labor Act. Uh, unfortunately, many people do not even know the consequences uh, of it. Uh, and, and maybe the people who are discriminated against or harassed or bullied do not know how to go about reporting it. Indeed, a company can even be ordered to be closed down if you are uh, such a recalcitrant employer and causing uh, harassment, and of, especially of, of the woman uh, at the workplace. Right it's very punitive, but people do not seem to know uh, it, especially the women, and therefore they allow them, themselves to be bullied into submission uh, when it's visited upon them. But if they properly report it to the Labor Commission, the Commission has ways and means. If they cannot do it themselves, uh, they can engage the services of other people to assist them in resolving these differences. Mm -hmm. But let me quickly add that uh, to what my brother Frank uh, just said, that yes, if enforcement must be done and done properly, because, um, you know, there is no alternative to some of the things, for it, especially when it comes to sexual harassment at the workplace, for instance. And if it's gone beyond a certain level, there is no alternative to it, like even doing mediation or trying to resolve it at the cover. The person must be properly dealt with through legitimate, you know, legal process, so that when it serves as a, a deterrent to people, people will not be misbehaving in the country again. Because often we hear about either rape or attack on women, especially, even though men do suffer it once a while, I, I don't see it as much a problem than the way we treat the women in the country. Mm. So I, I think if we can uh, orderly ensure that people who misbehave to this extent are dealt with, you know, severely, it will serve as a deterrent and stop this people who are misbehaving in this country that way. Mm. Mr. Gamay, if I am underutilized or overutilized at the workplace, can I take an action against my company? Immediately, yes. Because you are employed to do a specific job. You have your job description. And now if you are being discriminated against by way of allocation of legitimate job that you are supposed to do, you are, you are being underutilized. It may not help you grow in, 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 in work life and gain the needed experience and the skill that you're supposed to require to, to, to attain. And therefore, you have the right to complain. If you complain internally and it's not being addressed, why not? You can go to uh, some expense to guide you and go to the Labor Commission for assistance. That's why it's created. How is such an incident resolved? Will I still remain in the company? Yes, you, can, you may you will remain in the company uh, uh, because you are not you are not um, acting as to you want to misbehave. You are not misbehaving. You are actually expressing misgiving. First of all, internally, 
you would have taken steps by way of bringing the attention of the employer to it that you think that you are being underutilized. If the employer listens to you and make amends, fine. If they fail to do that, you put it on, on paper, and if they fail, eventually you will you will have to uh, find a way of reporting it to, to the National Labor Commission where it can be addressed. Mm -hmm. But I think the best way is to approach it internally first by checking somebody to, 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 to try and bring it to the attention of the employer if they're not listening. Mm. Uh, there's a final one on that. If I if I feel that I am not being paid, even though I ne negotiated my salary, if after accepting the conditions I enter and I feel that, uh, oh, there are people who are who are getting pet better salary than myself. What action can I take? It means that I'm being discriminated against financially. Can I take an action? Uh, why not? If it's true. The point is that the salary administration, salary administration goes beyond, you know, just uh, normal talking about it. Uh, the job obviously might have been evaluated. You have been weighted and placed where you are supposed to be placed. You cannot be underpaid from where you have been placed already. If you are being genuinely underpaid, then obviously steps will have to be taken to re-evaluate your job and place you where you deserve to be placed. Mm. And it's a process you have to go through. Either yourself, if you don't understand it, you get somebody who will guide you. Or if you belong to a union, you go to a union. If you don't belong to a union, you go to the Labor Commission or look for a private person. Mm. The, so it means that the, the Labor Commission has a lot of responsibility. But are they well resourced to take care of us in this way? Uh, outside the presidency and maybe the Supreme Court, the next most important uh, commission in this country is, is the Labor Commission. Uh, people don't know the value of the Labor Commission. Obviously, the question of capacity is another thing altogether. So, government, employers, and unions who contribute the human resource to that place must ensure that they don't just send anybody there. It might be somebody with adequate knowledge, their, their understanding, and the skill to be able to perform this task. It's a huge task. And if they don't perform well, this country can go down. Mm. All right, Mr. Game, we'll leave our conversation here. Grateful that you could join us uh, on this yeah. conversation. God bless. All right, last Mr. Austin Game there joining us. Uh, uh, quickly, I think Maxwell Agbagba is ready. Okay, we're going to go with him uh, briefly, but I still have the acting director, Amnesty International Ghana. Uh, Mr. Frank Doey here with me. Is there anything that Mr. Game said that you yes, want I, to? I'm, I'm very happy about the labor anger, you know, to the discussion because, um, you know, human rights are indivisible. So that when you talk about the right to life, you also mean that people have the right to work mm. because in order to live, you must eat. And to eat, you must work to earn mm. a living. So it is important that we look at the labor front very closely to ensure that people are not discriminated against, that they are able to do their work well within the conducive environment, and they are able to maximize their potentials and put out their best, and also develop, you know, personally, as, as they work uh, for the development and sustainability of the nation. So it's important that we address all issues of discrimination at, at the labor mm -hmm. front. If I feel, if, if I see some discrimination going on, I'm not directly affected, yeah. but there are other people involved. Yeah. What yeah. can I do as a third person? As a third person, you need to report it. Um, you know, you talked about the Commission on Human Rights and mm. Administrative Justice. We work very closely with Suraj, and we do recognize that um, they do not have the needed resources, you know, to be able to do their work effectively. And, and so we must all be interested in, in working together to call on those who have the power to take decision on this mm -hmm. to make sure that we adequately resource okay. the, this national human rights institution so yeah. that when people report you know, cases of discrimination to SRAD, mm. SRAD then can take action and okay. act on it in expeditiously to All make right. sure that those issues are addressed. Okay, let's just quickly uh, go to Maxwell Agbaba. He's my colleague and he's pitched come somewhere uh, with a whiteboard. Maxwell, what do you have on the board? Experiences of discrimination. Make us start again. Okay, yeah, so obviously uh, Maxwell trying to get ready uh, and to shoot. 
Uh, so, yeah, Maxwell, we'll make you start again. Go ahead. We find out from some workers uh, uh, who are on their way to work, actually. Uh, we are asking them to share their experiences of discrimination with us. So, you see this whiteboard here, Zero Discrimination Day. They are going to write uh, the specific area where they suffer discrimination. It, it could be their own experiences, it could be other people's experiences. They'll be sharing that with us uh, right about now. But I'm watching him. My name is Alberta. Alberta. Okay, so maybe you draw closer to my white board for me and then you write the specific area where you suffer discrimination or somebody you know, you know, suffer discrimination in that particular area. Oh, okay, so she writes gender. <laughs> okay, so gender discrimination. Fibo, can you share with us? Um, was it a personal experience or somebody's, somebody's experience? Actually? Well, actually, it's not a personal experience, but then it's a general thing that usually goes on. You know, women, at a point, you're at work, you get pregnant, mm. you give birth, and then situations like you'll be going for, let's say, time is up for you to go pick your child up from school, yeah. and then work is also there, mm. and they're like, you came to work, so you should work. And then even some positions are there, they won't give it to you, even exactly. though you are capable of it, but mm. because you're a woman. And some and, people have... Yeah that mentality of oh she'll be going on maternity leave very yeah, soon you exactly. know and they are like women when they get positions they are too proud and all that which i believe is not true so those discriminations are there that's gender discrimination okay I, wait I, are you a feminist anyway not really you know okay right of late Charlie, a lot of the females just, are feminists. i just say the general thing you okay. Get it. Yeah. okay thank you very much alberta now let me find out from this gentleman also here yeah let me find out from this gentleman here um which specific area Write that on a whiteboard for us. I have not actually experienced any discrimination of that sort in my life. Oh, lucky you. But, but way back in secondary school, we have this colleague. Okay, oh, maybe oh. you want to write it here first. Oh, oh gender. <laughs> Interested. Yeah. Okay, so if you're talking about feminism here, maybe we'll be talking about something else here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He was actually Sorry, suffering from autism. Okay. Yeah. So we pretend students as, as young as we are to to show our affection but in Wally, people actually don't want to get closer to this boy because he was suffering autism and and that was a problem for him yeah wow. yeah so this is discrimination based on health grounds, health grounds yeah okay yeah. Because, yes. because i think the place wasn't the right place for him to be but the parents were thinking it could be in school and he has to be in school but he suffered a, a great deal of discrimination yeah, but I have not actually. <laughs> That's a sad story. It's a, it's a very sad story. Way back, way back in secondary school. Yeah, it was an autism. I don't know why the parents brought him to the place because that wasn't the place he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be in a special school. Yeah. But he was there and he was going through a lot. So that was it. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I'm going to change this to, um, let's say, health discrimination, right? It's going to be health. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, yeah, so we have. Right about now, we have gender, we have health. Let me find out from this gentleman. Okay, so Maxwell obviously have mm -hmm. a lot more people uh, to get them to write on the board. Uh, but unfortunately for us, we don't have any more time left. Uh, so, But we're going to bring you what the people wrote yes, uh, tomorrow right here on our, on our show with the whiteboard here in studio. That's Maxwell Agbaba there. Mr. Frank, uh, do you just quickly, uh, any final words you want to yes, share? Thank you very much. The issues raised, you know, uh, are very important. This is about health and also gender. Mm. These are some of the recommendations that the UN Committee on Human Rights you know, made to Ghana for us to address. Uh, human dignity is the basis of human rights and all efforts must be made to ensure that no one is discriminated against. Mm. Um, once we do that, we will be seen as one people you know, working to, together to promote a national unity, cohesion, and development. I am so grateful that you could make it at uh, such very short notice. Mr. Frank Doe is Acting Director, Amnesty International Ghana. And we'll have you uh, a lot more times to discuss because most of the okay. works that you do, really, uh, they are the everyday thing. We thank live you. with them. So we'll, we'll have a lot more conversations. Uh, that's it for our show. We thank you for joining us. We hope that you've enjoyed every bit of it. God willing, we will see you tomorrow. It's the big day and we're going big on the budgets from the beginning to the end right here on Joy News. So definitely stick with us. Enjoy the rest of your day.